Good morning, everybody. We're beginning week four, and this is what I've called in my written announcement our fun and games week. It's um, It allows you to be a little more playful, maybe a little less academic than you have been called upon to be in the preceding weeks and that you will be called upon to be in the following weeks. This week, we're examining what the people involved in the judicial system actually do. And we can consider, we will consider, people from the judge to the clerks to the uh, deputy clerks to the court reporters, the um, bailiffs, and of course the lawyers who participate in the system. Now, Apart from prosecutors who are public employees, the lawyers who participate in the system are not employees of the judicial system. They don't work for the state or the federal government, but they do work uh, integrally within the, uh, the system itself, especially in the courtroom, as, as we will see. One of your tasks this week will be to choose one of the roles in the judicial system, one of the ones I've just named, or another one if you've found somebody else you're interested in, and do a little research on what that person actually does. And I don't mean a particular person, but what the, the, uh, the job that you've chosen actually entails. For instance, if you choose to research and describe the role of a... Um, a bailiff in the uh, court system, then you would do just that. You would define what a bailiff is, you would um, explain to your reader the job that the bailiff plays within the, the court system itself, uh, what, uh, any other tasks that the bailiff might be called upon to, uh, to complete, uh, and especially this is part of the grading rubric for uh, the Module 4 short paper, especially that person's connection with the maintenance and uh, efficiency of the court's docket and calendar. Now, the example I pulled out of my hat, the bailiff, is not somebody who has very much connection with maintaining the actual docket, although he or she can have a good effect on uh, how efficiently that docket is um, is completed because that person pays uh, plays a role in keeping the court courtroom actually running efficiently. Um, so do all the other people involved in in the court process, the, the judge especially, the lawyers whose job it is to represent their clients, the um, the clerk who is there sort of as the right-hand assistant to the judge, the court reporter who takes down all of the testimony and uh, keeps uh, track of all the records in the case. Um, any number of people are going to be involved in the, um, in the process of a trial. One of the choices in, that you have in your, in, in your discussion board, not in the short paper necessarily, is a litigant. Uh, litigants are not, obviously, uh, employees of a court. They are people who are involved in a court proceeding. Now, we normally, lawyers, normally think of litigants as people who are involved in civil litigation. But the defendant in a, a criminal um, procedure is also a litigant in the sense that he or she will eventually be called upon to appear in court. So, as you are thinking about what actually happens in a courtroom, you're also going to be asked to describe one of the um, uh, the role of one of the participants in that courtroom uh, drama, so to speak. Uh, and speaking of drama, you will, as you do your research, you'll probably notice, if you haven't noticed this in real life, that what happens in an actual courtroom bears little to no resemblance with what happens in a courtroom on television or in the movies. Uh, for one thing, the procedure is uh, far less dramatic, and, and for another, it doesn't proceed in a sort of clockwork, logical, precise way as it does in um, in movies and on television where they are restricted by a, a one or two hour timeline. 
in reality, what happens is that the um, participants in a case in court will have their say, and but they have their say in accordance to some very um, well-defined and strictly applied rules of procedure and rules of evidence. Now, we don't get into that very much in Module 4. We'll get into that later, but keep in mind as you are examining what a person does in a courtroom that that person's uh, activities in a trial particularly are going to be carefully circumscribed by the rules of procedure and the rules of evidence. Uh, we will have ample opportunity to, to talk about those and, to, and, and you'll have the opportunity to research them as we go forward and especially as you get into your final project. Um, I guess that's about all I have to say this week. This is, as I say, a, a sort of non-academic or less academic week than we, uh, we usually have. Remember when you're writing your short paper to um, examine the connection between the person whose job you're describing and the court's docket and calendar. If there is any connection at all, no matter how slight, please be sure to include that in your paper because it's one of the aspects of the grading rubric and I'm going to have to evaluate you on it. Uh, in your rock, paper, scissors discussion board, have a little fun with that. Uh, the comparisons, please do remember that the comparisons are artificial. These people are not trying to, um, uh, or, or almost never, trying to prevent each other from succeeding in their particular roles within the court system. In fact, they work very well together most of the time. They have to, or the, the system wouldn't work at all. So what we're doing in the rock, paper, scissors uh, discussion board is, is artificial. Uh, Please don't think that there that you've got lawyers and judges plotting against each other and uh, clerks who are plotting to overthrow the court. That, that happens. Maybe it happens in the movies. I don't think I've ever seen that, but um, it doesn't happen in real life. It, we wouldn't have courts that lasted very long if it did. Uh, okay, I'm going to be quiet now, and I wish you all the best this week. Uh, enjoy your research. Enjoy your writing, and I know I'll re I'll enjoy reading it. Have a good week. Bye.